Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Mahai Game Guys board gaming podcast. I'm your host, Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm alive. <laughs> Jeff is back. <laughs> Huzzah. Hooray. And this episode is, of course, as all of our Wednesday episodes are, sponsored by Gray Fox Games, our awesome sponsors. G-R-E-Y. Yes. G-R-E-Y, yes. <laughs> Subtle difference between the Gray Fox of uh, Metal Gear fame. Indeed. So, Jeff, how's, uh, how's the leg? It works, but I can't put weight on it. Uh, when I left the hospital, they were like, you can do 50-50, which means, like, if you're standing on one leg, it's 100%. Yeah. And if you're standing on both legs, it's 50-50. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I had my first post-op, they noticed an ankle fracture that the hospital missed. And then they put me down to, like, don't put any weight on it or, like, up to 20%. But at no time in my life have I ever been like, hmm, okay, that's 20%. <laughs> yeah, yes, I, was that's, ask, I was about to ask. is like, what does 20% feel like? I have no idea. Especially because just using your legs is 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> Less than that. Yeah. Uh, so I've been on crutches. I've never been on crutches in my life before. How are your, how are your armpits? Sore. Like, <laughs> um, like, like right underneath there yeah. is, is really where they mm -hmm. get sore. Uh, I need to put some padding or something on there. I know I've definitely, like, I've used cr crutches before and I remember like using them before, but in a not necessary function. And so like you put them underneath your arm and you they don't feel bad, but that's because you don't put as much weight as you're supposed to. Like you do when you actually need it. Yeah. So you're like, oh yeah, no, this is. <laughs> it, yeah, and it's it's more arm. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like my forearms have yep. been sore, especially yeah. on my right. Oh, on I'm my sure, right yeah. arm. Um, I'm sure it's the crutches and not just the endless amounts of downtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have to go up quite a bit of stairs at Katie's place, uh -huh. uh, up and down. Uh, only one of which one set has railings. Um, <laughs> Death trap. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but otherwise, it's been fine. Uh, went back to work today for the first time. Only went in for a couple hours, like a half day. Because uh, basically, you stand all day. There's really no sitting. And right. uh, it is certainly the most comfortable to have your leg elevated because all your blood sort of just stays down there uh, <laughs> and kind of do some like muscle exercises right. to get them out of there. But there's a giant titanium pin and and incisions in my leg, and when I'm trying to flex, that doesn't really feel very good. Yeah. Uh, so trying to do that on top of everything else all at the same time, and then I have this like boot on there that is heavy. You need uh, to have Epic like temporarily transfer you to like the bar and give you just a <laughs> stool behind the bar, and you can just like I'm sorry, I have a broken leg. If you want a beer, you have to come to the bartender. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I will order your beer. Yeah. Give, I guess you'd have you'd have to have a rolly chair, so you could roll back over to the. No, no. Draft. He just say he just it's just it's just one that spins, and so he's like, "Well, I have, I know we have like twenty taps, but I can 25. reach five, twenty five. I can reach about four of them, so that's what you're getting." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, I don't, I don't, uh, I got transferred here, so I don't really even know what those four are. So <laughs> yeah, I just run the team that moved them here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, besides that, uh, you could drive now. You could just be full time in the trucks. Yeah. Just driving. Yeah. I could just do drive stuff all day. And I mean, I can work a sit down forklift just fine. Yeah. And I mean, I can work the stand up, but it's, it's once again hard to not put a, a lot of weight on that other foot. <sighs> And everything's exhausting. Oh, uh, yeah. Everything's exhausting. Yeah. Doing anything. Yeah. Is a trial. Yeah. It's also easy for those close to you to forget that you're <laughs> completely immobilized. I'm not completely immobilized. And just but... wonder why you're not doing things yourself. It's yeah. Like, oh, wait. You actually need help. Um, we also learned a lesson. Uh, Jester hates crutches. <laughs> Yeah, apparently jester my dog fucking hates crutches mm -hmm. i i hope it's not something like she just hates disabled people or something <laughs> like that. you're prey now Jeff. <laughs> it's because her her leg is messed up and she sees it as a weakness and so she... <laughs> it's uh self-loathing there yep uh but it's been like two weeks and two days mm -hmm. and i got another four weeks of crutches uh and then i am supposedly able to walk without crutches gotcha. uh, which will be nice but still boot or still boot i think i'm in boot for six to nine months oh, okay yeah 
So you'll still be in boot then, presumably at Geekway. Yes. Um, I'm pretty sure I will be in boot for a significant period of time. Gotcha. But six to nine months is like the full on, like you are 100% again prognosis. Right. Yeah. So cool. I have a question, Jeff. Yes. Obviously, snowboarding's out for this season. Yes. Are you going to are you gonna try again next year or? Yeah, I think I will. Okay. Uh, I think it was just a really unlucky fall that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, it 100% was like snowboarders especially don't usually that's like a skier break everyone was asking like how did you do this were you in the trees did you hit someone did you do that nope I just fell I was trying and, to stop but I fell <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like tumbled and twisted and that was it yeah yeah really bizarre I mean I've had some hellacious wipeouts yeah and and it's just sort of like the nose dug in and was yeah. and then the board stopped and that was it my one worst wipeout where I came the closest to anything like that I like twisted really bad and it just wrenched my knee and yeah. my knee, you know, like doubled in size for a couple of days. Yeah. That was real unpleasant. It still hurts occasionally. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good times. Speaking of snowboarding injuries, just real quick. Yeah. Uh, well, the last time I, I went out, I was playing around in the trees a little bit and there was like a down <laughs> tree and I don't know what I was doing. Like I saw it, but I clearly thought like that it was like where I was going past was like really like the loose floppy ends of it and so i didn't really pay like i didn't take care to avoid it and uh after the fact when i was looking at it i was like why didn't i avoid that because it jabbed me in the ribs and knocked me on my ass and like left a pretty good bruise like i was probably lucky i didn't hit it more head on or i would have impaled myself like the kids from uh um tucker and dale oh (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) those Uh, damn kids yeah but what makes me think of that is that just today on uh, the snowboarding subreddit, like just on my, I was browsing Reddit after I got home from work and there's a post from the snowboarding Reddit of somebody who had apparently like in the trees jabbed themselves onto a tree branch and had Ooh. a big old hole in their side. Ouch. And it, and it was like, it was like vaguely heart shaped. So it was like, Hey guys, be careful when you're in the trees. Also happy Valentine's day. And it was just a picture <laughs> of their like hole in their side. Nice. Ow. So if you want to see that, um, go over to the snowboarding subreddit. Uh, speaking of snow, I was watching uh, the Grand Tour. The third season of it mm-hmm. started a little while ago, and so I've been trying to catch up on the second season. Yeah, and uh, they did an episode in Colorado uh, where they 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 were trying to maintain how great uh, Jaguar ja- ugh. Jags yeah, ja- yeah Jaguar ja- yeah <laughs> Jaguar. Jaguar. Jags yeah Jaguar cars. Like apparently in the past ten or so years, they've only sold four hundred thousand versus like. BMW, Audi, and, and another one they mentioned, like, nine million each or something like yeah, that. Yeah, millions. Yeah. Um, and so they got old old Jags to to show how good they and reliable they still are. Uh, they end up replacing, like, at least two or three of them <laughs> during it. And they obviously were acting like they weren't, re- uh, they weren't replaced, including uh, – have you been to Telluride? No. All right. So they have the highest commercial airport in the U.S.? Okay. Like nine thousand feet or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and basically, the end of the runway, there's a bit of ground, and then there's like a thousand foot cliff. Okay. And so they were taking the Jags, and they were going up to a hundred, and then stopping. Uh-huh. And one of them went off the cliff, obviously in a not actually them, but the car did go off the cliff. And okay. Then, and uh, but then they immediately cut to them driving, and he's talking. I was like, yeah, I didn't even have a scratch on anything. It's <laughs> A and scratch it, yeah, on it, and it's like it's like more powerful. I feel like there's like it even grew a couple of cylinders. That's the thing about Jags; they get better as you own them. <laughs> but uh, it's the nanotechnology. Yeah, exactly. The final thing they did is they actually went to the Telluride uh, Ski Resort and like drove up uh, like to the top of one of the parts and then rode it down one of the 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 trails. I saw that. That was terrifying. That was, and I was like, oh yeah, maybe yeah. I've seen that. That was it was really cool, and I was like. Well, Jeff, you could always do that. It might be safer for you. <laughs> Just knocking people yeah. off. I mean, th- I think they crashed at the bottom, though, didn't they? Oh, I mean, probably one did because his brakes just went out. <laughs> yeah, 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 but that was that was the Jags' fault more than anything. <laughs> I'm gonna go down the family ski trail. Yeah, on the there was like the Jag. There's like a part where they were on like a cat track, and like mm-hmm. one of them started fishtailing like oh. towards the edge. I was like, oh, he's going over. He's going no, over. He's they, going over. Uh, they crabbed like multiple times where it's just you like turn like almost 45 degrees, but you're still going. Forward, yeah, <laughs> and it's it was very, but it was, it was very entertaining to watch. Yeah, I had time to do a lot of stuff over the last two weeks, like sit on the couch and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been keeping the Slack updated on some good shows lately. Yeah, um, I watched. <clears throat> so before 
all of this. I watched season one and two of The Expanse, which yes. was on Prime. And then season three came out on the 8th. And I watched the whole thing in that one day. All 13. <laughs> oh, my God. All 13 episodes. Aren't they like an hour long episode? Yeah, like they were TV. So they're like 42 minutes or 46 minutes or whatever you want to call it. So almost an hour. TV each. length. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm supposed to be taking a break like to stand up and walk around between each episode uh, because it's supposed to be up and around like every hour and get blood flow going. Uh, so I did that. So I, you know, watch an episode, walk around, watch an episode, walk around, do that all day. And then I ordered pizza. Um, <laughs> Cause Katie, uh, I've been staying at her place. Uh, it just helps to have someone else around that can be mobile when at yeah. a moment's notice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, she had some family friends come into town and they went off skiing uh, for like Thursday through Saturday. So I was by myself with her dog. Uh, so I decided to do that all day. It's great. It's a great show. Nice. Love. Yeah. I really like that show. I'm glad I, everyone, I'm glad I'm, I love that Amazon picked it up. You know, there's a board game of it too, right? I heard, and I heard it was okay. Yeah, yeah I, I've wanted to try it. Yeah. If, you, if you find it, I'll definitely play it. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't start it, but I finished Horizon Zero Dawn uh, on the PS4, mm -hmm. and I got the Platinum. I am missing three trophies from that game in its entirety, which is the New Game Plus, beating New Game Plus on v extreme difficulty, and like one trophy that isn't working that's in like the Wildlands ones where it's oh, like gotcha. kill six fire claws. I've killed like eight of those things and it's still not popping. So, oh, okay. So, well, I don't know. But I got the platinum. Nice. Second game I've ever platinumed uh, Arkham Knight. Batman Arkham Knight was the <clears throat> only other one I've platinumed. I think I've done two uh, Infamous Second Son and Spider Man. I was probably really close to Infinite Second Son. I still have your Spider-Man. Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah not, I mean, you Platinum did. So yeah. I mean, do you really well, like... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I want to get the DLC. Yeah. And all that I heard stuff, the DLC but... was all good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, started watching Star Trek Discovery because the Super Bowl happened. Yeah. Yeah. That was <laughs> I mean, it technically <laughs> I mean, I happened. Yes. I assume you've talked about the Super Bowl. Yes. Yes. And how yeah. it was a thing that did, in fact, happen. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then the it ended. The only people who cared were Patriots players. Fans, yeah. D did I talk about what New or about New Orleans doing the blackout for it? No. Oh, so real quick, sorry to interject, Jeff. It was fine. You, I was yeah. going to talk about how I got two months free because we watched. You get a week of CBS All Access, which was uh -huh. streaming the Super Bowl, and I was like, "And eh, do that." And Katie kind of wanted to watch it just to be able to talk about it at work with patients and stuff Fair like enough. that. Yeah. And I was like, "I can do a week free," and then it clearly knew that I'd got it just to watch the Super Bowl, and they're like, "Here's two months free," and so now I can watch Star Trek Discovery. Ah, yeah, cool. Which I started watching. Nice. It's uh, weird, but anyway, Super Bowl. I Saints. heard the second season's good. Me too. So Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Uh, first Saints. of all, it was the lowest rated Super Bowl, like Nielsen ratings, uh, lowest rated Super Bowl since like 2009. So like lowest rated Super Bowl in a decade. Uh, and those of you who follow the NFL, the, the least, superb owls, superb yes. owls. Yes. <laughs> those of you who follow a little bit, at least even during playoffs might know that the, the Rams won a very controversial game over the Saints in the NFC championship. I vaguely remember that. Uh, there was a very, very bad blatant no call pass interference. I remember one of the guys was like, "Oh yeah, I did that." And then the call didn't happen and he walked away just like, "Do do do do. I totally didn't do anything." Yep. Uh and so fans were understandably pissed. I mean, fans of, like of the NFL in general were pretty pissed because it was like a very key play in a key game and the refs were like, "Yeah, we're not going to call that. We're just going to let him get away with a really blatant foul." Um but so apparently, and I didn't know this, but apparently New Orleans fans decided to boycott the Super Bowl. Yeah. The Nielsen ratings in New Orleans was a 26 for the Super Bowl. They actually boycotted the fucking Super Bowl. I don't know what a 26 versus something else is. Um, Let me see if I can find really quickly a rating scale. All right. So uh, essentially uh, the Nielsen ratings, what they're trying to measure. And I like there's like some weird way where they like certain people like get chosen to be like a you can apply ratings box or something to be yeah. a Nielsen family or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, what the numbers are supposed that would, that would involve it having to have cable. Yes, it, <laughs> yes. Um, but what it ultimately means is it's supposed to represent one uh, percent. One rating point is supposed to represent one percent of the viewership. Okay. So like the the Super Bowl like overall across the U.S. was like a ninety two. So like ninety two percent of TVs were watching the Super Bowl uh, during like the Super Bowl. Um, they were tuned into that station, which was the lowest in, you know, since 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in New Orleans, though, it was like roughly a quarter of the TVs. Wow. Like substantially low. Like I, I, the Reddit, th- uh, the RNFL thread about it uh, was talking about the fact like somebody was like, yeah, like I was in New Orleans on business. He's like, I could not find anywhere to watch the Super Bowl. I had to watch it in the hotel room. Wow. Because <laughs> like all the no bars, bars I watched were, like... were not showing it. Yeah. They were all like, no, no, fuck the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, yeah, don't fuck with New Orleans. Yeah. They, they, you know, took on a hurricane and came out even stronger, and now they're taking on the NFL as well. Yeah. So, sorry, I just had to throw that quick little thing in there. It's fine. But Star Trek, it's okay. <laughs> Not, a, I don't love it. It's That's... weird. It's different. Like, the Klingons d- are super different, like, totally different from anything they've ever done before. Uh, they're super weird. I don't know. If you're not a big Star Trek fan, it's hard to describe. <laughs> um, but definitely a lot of, like, let's try and look like those movies that were popular, but this is all before even the original series. So like, but all their technologies like looks way better. So it's so sort of weird, like how they've done that. I don't know. There's holograms. They didn't have yeah. holograms until like way later, <clears throat> hundreds of years later. Yeah. Well, that's why the Orville is the best Star Trek show on TV. I mean, I'll just say, I know that they address it at some point that yeah. there are holograms and that they aren't, there aren't. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wait, what? In uh, Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek Discovery. Oh. Yeah. Apparently they talk about it. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think it was this most recent episode or something like that. But. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And there's also commercial breaks, even though it's only on a streaming service. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> well I mean, you can get it without commercials, mm-hmm. but they make it so there's like commercials yeah. in there. It's it's weird watching a streaming only show that does like the br- pause, like fade yep. to black to, for commercials and then just comes back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a lot of time sitting around. Some would say two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it is an amount of time. Yeah. We've yeah. had two fake Jeffs. <laughs> I know. Both both have been very well received. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a chance to try out, finally try out uh, Sniper Elite 4 on the P- uh, PC. Okay. It, ha- it was during the lunar sale. Ah. Yeah. I don't remember if I got that on one of the, like, the... Humble, Humble. Hum, that had three on it. Okay, and so. they've done two after that. Yeah, like, there's... but I've had them for like so long because they've been on sales yeah. like millions of times. Yeah. Uh, How many balls did you explode with bullets? I, I didn't do any of those yet. Okay, I, I know I can though. Uh, I've I've just had a whole it's not bunch the most of most lethal of shots. No, but it's 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 satisfying. <laughs> it's graphic. Yeah, it's graphic. Uh, a lot of headshots, and it's it's always nice. I, I do like that they give you the option at the beginning of the game when you're setting it up. Do you want to have the kill cams on? It should just be like. Yes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's most of the reason I play this exactly. game. Exactly. And I, I shoot Hitler in the balls. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize it would take so long like for each scenario. Like the opening one, I did I did in about an hour, but then yeah. again I was just like I was like, "Oh man, there's a lot of the little map to explore." Yeah, they're and, all just kind of just here's a map and yeah. just do what you need to do. Yeah. Uh, it was enjoyable. I liked yeah. it. Definitely. I I would really I would really want to try it because I know you can do it too like co-op. And then, like, you can have person people spotting for you. You can also okay. be like, "I'm going to kill this guy. You kill that guy." What you know? Actually, Three, two, one, yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if I have that game. Mm. I don't know. Ast- have you played I, any I Astroneer? Know I don't. I have a Astroneer? No, yeah. I have not. It hit 1.0. Yeah. I saw it hit 1.0. I didn't know if it came with a new update or anything as yep. they went to 1.0. Indeed, it did. Ooh, maybe I have to give it another shot. It looks shot. real pretty. Yeah. I've still just been playing the absolute shit out of uh, Resident Evil. I fin- still. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I finally played the uh, like. I downloaded the one shot demo of it way back when it first came out, and I I just tried it today. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, I assume. Well, I know you saw it, but where they replaced the the sound of Mister X with X gonna give it to you? Yeah, from DMX. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the best thing I've seen someone mod since. <laughs> Someone modded into Left 4 Dead. All the zombie noises replaced with Macho Man noises. Yep. Yes, we've we I think we talked that. about that. We yeah. played that I think on the air. Like we pulled years up the phone yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> oh, probably, oh yeah. Probably oh, in the first yeah. twenty episodes. Yeah. I think we yeah, referenced yeah, that. It was, yeah, Sounds it was about way right. back. Yeah. Uh, no, that uh, <laughs> I I, I kind of want to do that mod, like just to do it. But at the same time, like I've from anybody I've heard who's tried it is like, although it's hilarious, it completely just ruins oh, any absolutely. tension well, that of the course. game has. Yeah. It's supposed to be like invulnerable yeah. amount of like <laughs> unstoppable and He's a real dick, that Mr. X. I remember that from long, long ago. 
I mean, he was barely in the original Resident Evil 2, though. Like, he's legit in this one. He was in the original Resident Evil 2. Not much, though. As, not, as much not as... Near, no. Yeah. No, they didn't they, change what, stuff like that, really. Yeah. yeah. They completely redid level designs, too. The levels mm-hmm. are completely redesigned. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, they didn't just up res Resident Evil 2 and throw it in the... <laughs> That's what they did for one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he was in he was in two a, a fairly good amount. Yeah, I don't I don't think the it original. was as much though. I was looking into it because oh. I know ne- I didn't remember him. Yeah. When I first saw him, I was like, oh shit, it's the nemesis. Oh no. And then I was like, wait, no, I'm playing two. Nemesis doesn't come till three. Correct. Who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And then and, and like and I thought it was like the nemesis where it's like a scripted event where you get away from him and then he goes away. And so then when he like showed back up and I was like, Oh fuck, he's following me. Yeah. Uh that's more like he I think it was really easy to dodge in the original, where you can yeah. just be like, I go through this door and then he's gone. In this, they're like, no, no. Yeah, apparently somebody did like an uh uh like <laughs> they they went where they like went in a safe room and then like you know unclipped the camera or whatever so they could take it wherever and you can see him like hunting you huh. like he's got his own AI. That's cool. And so he is hunting. There's him. definitely some spots where he's supposed to show up though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple scripted events for him, like when you've been gone for a while and you come back, and he's like, "Boom!" right there. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure he teleported for me once, because like he was nowhere around. I did some shit, and I stepped out of the room, and then he was like, "Hello, hi!" <laughs> Coming around the corner, it was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, he's terrifying. Liquors still suck. Liquors are the goddamn. I haven't worst. seen any footage with the liquor in it yet, but they're I terrifying. They yeah. they did a great job rezzing those guys up, making them look. Scary. Gross. Mm. Uh, dogs are still a little bit of a bitch. Um, Sounds right. Yeah. Burke isn't as tough. I didn't. I, I don't know. Mm. I, I, I haven't had many issues with Burke. Yeah. It's been so long since I've played that original yeah. one. I think Burke was hard back in the original ones because you had to shoot the eye, but you only had like three aiming positions. <laughs> yeah, straight up and down. <laughs> Whereas now you actually have like legit targeting. And yeah. so like a big, huge eye on his shoulders, just really easy to be like, oh, it's Burke. Here's my Magnum. Go, 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 go. Yep. That's the Resident Evil update. Yeah. Uh, I almost bought Assassin's Creed. Odyssey? Uh, it's good. Odyssey. Or, well, or no, because I almost got the Origins? Egypt one. Okay. Yeah, Origins. Origins. Because it was, it was down to like $32, and then there was like, if you spend 30 you get five off. And so Odyssey, that they, they, been... they were both crazy. They were both like 60 to 70% off. Well, Odyssey should be like 10 to $15, or I'm sorry, uh, Origins. Origins should be like 10 to $15. Odyssey would run about 30 is Odyssey the newer one? Yes. Oh, it's the uh, the Greek. Greek one. Oh, I thought like the, Spartans and Athens. I thought the Egypt one was the newer one. Nope. No. No. Oh, I although, think it was although, actually cheaper. I think Odyssey was actually cheaper. Odyssey than... does take place before Origins, so <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Wow. Weird. I almost got it, and then I didn't, and I don't know if that sale's still going on. No. So I don't no. know. It ended well. yesterday. I bought damn. nothing on the sale. I bought damn, uh, damn. Gorgoa was the other thing that I bought too. What's that? It's. It's like this puzzle sort of game. It's really cool, but it's I would say look it up. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk about board games. Yeah. Sure. Jeff, have you gotten to play board games during the last like two and a half weeks that you've been broken? Yes, I have actually. What have you played? So we're gonna go way back, way back to things that we've already <laughs> talked about. Uh, <laughs> Probably. I will, I will mention them okay. because I showed no opinions on the show, of course, of what these were. Uh, um, I believe you did. It just wasn't you. Yeah. <laughs> False Jeffs <laughs> took care of all of your opinions. I see. Um, Wingspan. So we're going back to like January 22nd <laughs> at this point. Um, Wingspan, interesting. Engine builder, good art. It was okay. It was all right. I didn't love it. I didn't hear your, but you thought it was okay? Okay. Well, you know what? You had plenty of time to listen to it. <laughs> so I feel like if you want to get our opinions on it, you should listen to the stupid episode. Well, n- Correct. Well, that- <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was okay. I didn't love it. And it's just like, man, do the this thing, and then now I need to do this column, and then I need cards, so I'm going to do this column, and then it's like, and then the game ended. And I was just like, eh, whatever. It's got a great rule book feel. It does the greatest rule book mm-hmm. feel. Um, and then you guys did the uh, Denver Beer Co. Old Town, Ar- yeah, yeah, Arvada, Arvada. yeah, which I didn't go to. Uh, and then I broke my leg, mm-hmm. and then I went to game night after that. Uh, we're at Burns Family Artisanal Ales. Yep. Um, played just one uh, for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting, but there's it's sort of just kind of like there's no real game to it. Like you're not trying. I mean, you can try to win, but I it's mean, it's, it's cooperative, so it's it's everybody winning. So yeah, yeah. you're just trying to have fun. Yeah. You're not trying to actually like beat the game or it's a, it's a great game for if you're around friends to be like, 
we can play this and still talk shit and whatnot. Yes. So. Uh, we played Herbalism. We did. I won. Yes. And there was something about that game. I, I don't remember. Was it really long or really? I don't remember what it was. I don't remember it being distinctly long. I remember yeah. I was being really bad at it. Yeah, that's probably what it was. You and Katie both broke seven. You just broke it by more. Yeah. And I had like two. Yeah, because you guys got the wrong one on the end because yeah. I was like, you've clearly chosen this color that I've seen all of, and so it's definitely not that. So it's probably this one. Yeah. Uh, which gave me the advantage. Yeah, and I think Katie had like two prediction tokens, so she still netted two. Po- like, And I think she guessed the wrong one, and I followed so she lost no points, got two for her correct predictions. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah, you. And then I just won. And then you just won. Yep. Um, and then the Saturday, the, the next following Sunday, uh, V came by with some cupcakes and. Oh, yeah. And uh, some. I remember she said she was going to do that. Yeah. Some broccoli cheddar, like muffins that are kind of like, they kind of turned into mini, mini quiches. Yeah. They were very delicious. Okay. Um, and then we played some board games that day, played Sagrada, uh, my second time ever playing Sagrada, uh, still like Sagrada. It's a fun little dice draft game. The, the powers that came out were pretty similar. Uh, like one was useful where it lets you kind of like flip, uh, the die. And then the other two were like, move two, move one or two of colors and just move them. And the other one was like, move exactly two of a color that's in the like discarded row huh but like just use the other one i mean it was definitely a much more con- it was a weird that's all power. meaningless to me since i have yet to play sagrada at I, all i see so well you sure. place you place dice I, of different that I colors do know. you make stained glass windows so. yes that have to go in specific areas and then you can't place the same colors next to each other or the same numbers next to each other yeah uh so being able to adjust your dice for like, uh, the rolls fucked me. Now I have to move this one over here so I can place that there. That's why you would use the powers. Makes sense. But one of the powers was clearly, like, way more useful than the other one because it was not color restrictive. Um, got second place in that. Katie crushed, as is tradition. Uh, I think she was actually the only one that actually placed all the dice oh, on gotcha. hers. Um, and then there was uh, color, uh, different bonus points for getting sets of like one through six for every set of one through six on die facings you had and every set of fours and threes or every set of rows or that you had that had one of each color in it. And she got like every single one of those, like three each. Nice. Um, so crushed us, uh, but still only one by three points. Then we played uh, Kanagawa, which V loves. And yes, that's pretty, pretty sure it's her favorite game. Yeah, definitely. Yes. It's a like card drafting art game. Yeah. Um, I thought it was all right. It, it would make more sense probably if I played it more. Um, like exactly where I needed to move paint pots and like you don't always have to wait for all three columns to mm-hmm. get three before the first person bids because you're not going to actually have that many useful cards out of it. Then you're just going to end up with a bunch of colors that you can't use because you don't have paint pots yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, Katie had some friends from out of town come in. We played King of Tokyo. Uh, I had the best power cards I've ever had in King of Tokyo. Uh, I had the one where every time you heal, you just get plus one Mm -hmm. to your heal. And then I had the herbivore, which I think they changed in the second edition from an actual herbivore to like urban herbivore. Right. right. Nice. Uh, So if you actually start in Tokyo, you get three points instead of two. And then if you ever, and when you attack from inside Tokyo, you do plus one damage. Gotcha. So I had both of those and I was so close to winning and then just got annihilated someone rolled like five damage on me and i was like well that was it (laughs) (laughs) uh and then we played the game um which was their of course their first time ever playing this uh katie has the game and loves the game do you have the new edition yeah the new edition i showed them the old edition art and they're like ew yeah (laughs) that's everybody's response to it is why why um our our first two rounds we got 14 so we got the exact same score and then on the final round we got uh four Play. Which is a much better score. Yes. Um, they were kind of getting the hang of it in the first couple rounds to where they would play like two. And then they're like, well, I could play this third one. And then we were trying to, and then the third one would be like, it'd be like 79, 78, 72. Yeah. Like, mm, you don't really need to play that yeah. third one because now you've skipped like two cards that mm-hmm. are in both of our hands that we just can't play anymore. Yeah. No teaching, 
newer people that it's just like, oh yeah, I'm, all my cards are sorted right near each other, so I can just play them. And it's just like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I still do that a lot. No, yeah. uh, I had the biggest jump I've ever had. Uh, I think I did a. Uh, I I went from a sixty one to a ninety one. Ouch! That's that's your biggest jump. I, in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like I, so it was counting down. It was at sixty-one. I had the seventy-one, the eighty-one, and the ninety-one okay. in oh. my hand. Oh, by yourself. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I I played all three of those to jump gotcha. it back up. I was gonna say because I thought you meant just the biggest skip, like going from eight, sixty-one oh, no, to ninety-one. Was... I'm like, thir- <laughs> I've had like a sixty-seven point jump. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> happened. That that definitely yeah. happened. But yeah. I had the biggest save that I've ever uh, done. I've only had two. I've only had like two in a row on my turn, but I have seen. Uh, when we were playing at uh, Fiction, we ended up having a card stack was, I want to say it was roughly It was 20, at least a quarter of the deck. 20, 25 cards, yeah. and the number was five. And it, was at, <laughs> and it started at one. We were able to bring it all the way back down. We were able to bring it from like a 55 down to a five. Wow. Yeah. It was pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we lost that. Well, we, we got one card. We got one game. card that... Should have been played. It was it was their first or second. It was their second time playing. It should have been played because she because uh, they basically did. Uh, she skipped f- uh, forward a bunch. Yeah, she skipped forward a bunch. But her other card could have been played in that skip. Ah, uh, and it was like, uh, why did you save that? Yeah, <laughs> just kind of a rookie rookie yeah. mistake. Yeah. yeah, that'll that'll happen. Yeah, uh, and that's my like two plus weeks of catch up on board games. Yeah, gotcha. nothing nothing too fancy. But, right on. Yeah. Uh, mine's pretty straightforward. Uh, I haven't got to play much. Megan's mom came into town, uh, last Tuesday. So she's been around, um, and so we've been hanging out with her. And although she does like to play board games, we just quite, haven't quite like made time for it. Uh, I also, this was like my, you know, I just, I got a new job last week. So that was like a full week of job that sucked, uh, (laughs) and I hate, but it is what it is. Um, so I only got to play games. I'll probably, Uh, I'll probably trade you a broken leg for that though. (laughs) <laughs> well, the nice thing, I, see, I actually wouldn't mind a broken leg right now because they have a policy where, like, if you break your leg, they will temporarily move you to a position where, like, you don't need to do it. So, like, I'd okay. get an office job, All right. and then I could maybe excel at that office job and be like, can I just make this my new job? Yeah. There you like, go. Yeah. So, uh, you have permission to smash my leg? No. No, you do well, not. Well, trade legs. I'll have your good leg, and then you get a broken leg. That's going to cause so many problems for both of us. I'm <laughs> yeah. pretty sure our legs are not no, the same No, leg. I want to see that now. You get, and so, Jeff, now you just walk. With a limp, or I don't <laughs> His know, shorter yeah, leg. Be a yeah. limp with yeah. my shorter. Th- yeah, <laughs> that'll be well, fun. Not specifically. We're not d- trading legs. D- it's you just, said uh, trade. Legs. You said trade legs. Leg yeah. conditions. No, it's do you, too do late you now. Have, uh, do you have like high arches or anything? No. Okay. Are you flat footed? No. Well, well you're gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just say it'd be real interesting for you trying to snowboard. <laughs> Probably. Um, I have a tiny I, foot. Yeah, anyway. I, don't, well, I don't know if you lead with your left foot first or your your right foot first. left. Okay, yeah. so you're gonna be <laughs> facing yeah. your weight's gonna be forward. <laughs> weight's yeah. gonna be forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Anyway, uh, all I got to do for gaming was uh, game night on Wednesday. Um, at uh, fiction. At fiction. Um, big old snowstorm, so we didn't have a huge turnout. It always um, seems to snow right around. Yeah, when we go to fiction. Because yeah. I remember you smashed yeah. your windshield last time. Yeah, we time. mentioned that like <laughs> yeah. when when I was driving, because I drove Zach, because he, he was like, I'm not driving my car. Yeah. Um, and then when we were on our way back, he was like, yeah, he's like, it's a good thing your window didn't get smashed like last time. Uh, so she since I had literally just fixed that window the weekend prior. Yeah. Like nice. Three years later. Um, <laughs> but uh, I got to play... We we played uh, the game that we already talked mm-hmm. about there a little bit. We scored one. Uh, we played for sale. Yep. Um, which I came in, I think, like second or third. Uh, and uh, was was fun. For sale is mm-hmm. always a, a good little time. Uh, someone definitely did that sort of rookie move of like paying way too much for something in the very beginning. Yeah, and then never having enough money to do anything yeah. the rest of the game. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but then the main game I got to play, I got to play some more of Crusaders that I will be done. I played a three-player game. Uh, I took about two hours, which at game night is not bad at all. Yeah, which uh, is, yeah. It is one of those games, too, where, like, especially, like, I know, Zach, you'd come by at one point and we're like, oh, man, you guys still have a long ways left to go because, like, there was a decent pool of points. Yeah. I mean, it but, definitely like, ramps up. That game, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it you start earning, you go from earning, like, maybe one or two points a turn to earning, like, ten points a turn, and it'll... Uh, it'll well, and I, I was away. also, I think, judging it based off of 
four player versus three player. Yeah. So obviously you have one less person going out doing stuff. Cause I was like, yeah, the, uh, the, the strengths of the, the Prussians and the Slavs are low. Yeah. They were, they were, they only got to eight, I think. in gotcha. both of them. Okay. Whereas I think we almost maxed them out in we, our four yes. player game. Yep. Also like people weren't crusading as hard in this one. They were doing other things. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get the, like, let you skip a thing, which so, like my influence action was an action. I was actually yeah. taking. Yep. Um, I crushed like real hard. Uh, I got over a hundred, uh, and then I think it was like just under a hundred, and then like eight or no, then it was like sixty. Like the third person, third got like sixty points, and they were kind of bummed. And then I was like, well, let me pull out my stats here. My first play, I got sixty four. So don't feel so bad. Yeah, yeah. that's just a first player, uh, like a first play score. Um, it definitely is a game where like understanding a little bit about how the scores work and like where points come from helps immensely. Oh, 100%. So it benefits greatly from a, a second play. How did you think uh, three versus four players? I didn't notice much okay. difference. Um, a little bit a little bit freer in moving around. Um, there are now... there's Because now... it uses the same board, right? It's yeah, only two it uses player, the exact same board. The two players is the only one that's different. Yeah. Okay. So it's not as contested of a start, especially, because uh, you can... There's more spaces to potentially build before you go fight. Right. Um... Yeah, fighting, like, there were a lot more. Like, it's interesting since the the tribes or whatever they call them, the, the enemies that you're crusading against, since they hinder movement, having less players still kept movement kind of tough. Right. Because there weren't as many people clearing those out. That, that makes sense, yeah. So... It wasn't as easy to get deep into ter- the territory, yeah, yeah. Which is where a lot of the really good <clears throat> bonuses came yeah. in, so... Uh, I th- I thought it played fine at three though. Okay. I didn't notice any major differences. It wasn't like oh god, I'd only play this at four. Like I played it three again. Okay. How d- how did your enjoyment of the game playing it the first time versus the second time go? Roughly the same. Okay. I right. like it. Okay. I I I dig the Moncala. Yeah. Uh, I think it makes for some interesting decisions it about does, what yeah. you're going to do and yeah. when. Uh, the powers all seem to be pretty roughly like fair yeah uh, i do think the ones that let you upgrade to start are very powerful like having that upgrade to start is pretty great mm-hmm. especially because you could pick one like a move and build and, and you know put one into move and then enough into build like i i really quickly in this one i rushed the build track so i, I had like four points yeah. into build no no yeah, so i could fair. build the other early stuff with like i'd get two tokens and i could do one to move one to build and move and build a level five yeah and so that that worked out really well uh, I want to try two player. That's actually on the reverse mm-hmm. board and is a different map. I'm curious how two player feels. I might have to try and get Megan to play sometime uh, this weekend or later this week or something. We'll see. Cool. So, yeah. The, the most I know about this game is that it's heavy weight wise. Yes. <laughs> Not gameplay weight wise, but like there's a lot of wood bits. Yeah. yeah. And some pretty thick cardboard bits. It yeah. was it was heavier than I was expecting as I picked it up and threw it on my bed and then went to go snowboarding. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on that fateful day. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but that's all I played. So what about you, Zach? Uh, first thing I played is, uh, oh, during the sale, I ended up, uh, the steam sale, I ended up buying mystic veil, the steam version. I had too. forgotten there was an app coming yeah. out for that. I, too. I, it literally was like, it came out that day when I was looking oh. around and I was like, Oh, okay. So I'll buy it. It was like $15. Um, it's very pretty. Um, and it works very well. The, um, the AI are actually super quick on their actions, which is nice. Yeah, that's helpful. Uh, it's not like terraforming Mars, where it's just like I'm gonna fucking wait five oh, minutes there, to is do the AI anything. really slow. On I that mean, one? It, well, it's just that one. It's just it does animations for like everything that it's uh, wanting to do. You're just like, uh, like it's the best part about Civilization. You can just skip yeah. enemy an- well, activations. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't have to watch uh, the other players do their like push their luck thing in Mystic Veil. Vale. Yeah, it's just. Once I'm done with my turn, their turn goes, and then they just buy, and then it's the next person's turn. They buy, and then it's my turn to start pushing my luck and stuff again. So, yeah, um, it works. It works very well. Uh, I can't find an undo button, which is the only annoying thing, mm. uh, because I was I like a couple times I'm like, oh, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna put this over here, and then I'm like, actually, I want to put it over here, there in a different spot, and I'm like, oh, well, I can't really now I drag can't, it now. Can't, now I can't no. do that. But it's very, <clears throat> it's very well. Uh, like everything is put together well. The uh, all the icons and stuff are very easy to understand in this, but it's the base game, of Mystic Veil. Vale, which after playing the non base, like with the expansion, I'm like, yeah. oh, this is now good. We, now yeah. I need expansion. Now I need expansion stuff. Uh, 
and which I, like they have spots for, and so I'm assuming you'll be able to buy them sometime soon. So hopefully not for fifteen dollars yeah. each or something. I haven't tried the online yet. I've just been doing AIs, but okay. it's 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 been enjoyable. I mean, it it's just a super quick game of Mystic Veil, which is nice. Yeah, which is nice. Um, but unlike the terraforming Mars AI, uh, I've been playing at not even the highest difficulty. And I'm regularly coming in second or third, and I'm like, God right. damn it, <laughs> get good. Yeah, I tied. Fir- I tied first, but somehow, get- but I came second, and I'm <laughs> the like, tiebreaker. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I don't remember what the tiebreaker was, but I fucked it up, whatever it was. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but other than that, um, when Adrian was playing Crusaders, uh, I played two games of Cribbage. Ah, yeah. Uh, so we'll continue that Cribbage minute, <laughs> and. Uh, I did shitty the entire time. <laughs> None of the cards were with me. Um, I had one chance where I basically it was like a four, three, two, and like a jack mm-hmm. in my hand, and then the other two cards in my hand were uh, an eight and a seven. And I was like, well, obviously I need to get rid of the eight and the seven because like it sucks because it wasn't my crib; it was uh, Allison's crib. I'm like, I hate giving her two points. And then uh, the card that flipped over was a nine, and I'm like, God damn it! Now that's five points. It's a run. And an eight and a seven. And then when she revealed her crib, she had put in two eights. And so it was a triple run wow. with uh, three fifteens in there. And I was like, I think, I think it ended up coming up to 21 points. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> it was great. I, I was playing Crusaders right around this time. Yeah. And like Zach had a little bit before I like I leaned over like, hey, how's Cribbage going? And he's like, oh, this game's going much better than last game. And then a little bit later... I heard them like talking about skunk lines or something. It was like, wait, who's about to get skunked? It was like, both of us, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It was like, wait, I thought you said this game was going better. Well, it was. <laughs> it was, yeah. Uh, so the first, the first one ended with me a couple, like a couple points ahead of the double skunk line, <laughs> which <laughs> okay. I was like, that's all I care about. Didn't get double skunked. Didn't this, get double skunked. Yeah. The second one, the second game, we did a three-player game, and it was going well for the first third or so, but then. Uh, Allison got a big boost from like a 20 point hand or something and then was able to to go there. I think Andrew stayed away or he was able to not be uh, skunked, but I was skunked. So okay. it just didn't it didn't go well, but still an enjoyable game. Did you play cribbage at all yesterday? No, I did not. It was National Cribbage Day. Oh, huh. well, at least yeah, we're no, talking about it now. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about it until I was browsing Facebook uh, like earlier while I was waiting for you guys to come by and I saw a post about it that was like 22 hours ago somebody posted about it's National Cribbage Day it's like well that's 22 hours ago so yep. that does me no good <laughs> yeah no I was I was driving for most of yesterday so gotcha yep uh, uh, and that's about it the tiebreaker for Mystic Veil uh-huh. is combined level 3 advancements oh, yep. and level 2 Veil cards oh yeah that's what it'd be they definitely had more of those yeah <laughs> <laughs> um real quick before we move to news and Kickstarter uh I did also do D and D on Sunday. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it much. Just episode nine has been recorded. Episode eight will be out uh, tomorrow from listening date, so Thursday. Episode eight of Mile High Dungeon Delvers will be out. Uh, there's a lot of fighting in episode eight, so if you like combat, you'll like episode eight. There's no fighting in episode nine, so if you like combat, you might not like episode nine. But there's drunken shenanigans, so that's fun too. Fun. That's D and D. Yeah. Jeff, you're back on the show. It's been like three weeks since you've been on air. You've missed two episodes. Uh huh. Is there a bloody minute? There is, but not because I played anything. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I do want to still talk about uh, Blood Bowl. There's, uh, we've got a tournament coming up Saturday, the KO Bowl. Uh, registered. I re-upped my NAF uh, today. Ten dollars a year. Oh. <laughs> Um, and I'll probably be playing orcs again. I'll probably be going for the casualty trophy again, um, because they're really my only painted team. And I mean, I could always borrow one of ants, uh, but I like orcs. They're definitely one of my favorite teams I've played. Uh, I like the high armor and high strength and stuff like that. Uh, I think I, what was the last bowl I played? I think it was the Turkey bowl, um, which is going to be a little different. This one's more of our standard, like straight line, uh, tournament. Yeah. Um, we're still hunting for one more coach to play in our season. We mm-hmm. need one more person to play for three divisions. If we don't get that one more person, we're going to go down to two divisions. 
Uh, also, David's not playing this this season. Really? Yeah. yeah, he dropped out. Uh, first, I heard about it today. That's surprising. Oh, really? Yeah. I heard about it like a month ago. Yeah, like I heard a while ago that he was like, "I'm not gonna play," and Paul was like, "That's bullshit. He's gonna play. I'm gonna convince him to play." Uh-huh. And then like two weeks ago. I was talking to Ant, and he's like, oh, yeah, David's not playing. And I, and Paul was right there. I was like, I thought you were going to get him to play. He's like, yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> I <was> like, yeah. <laughs> Is he just not enough time or not enough interest anymore? I did not hear uh, any reason. Uh, yeah, I think he just it. needed a break. Okay. Like, it just got to be a bit much. I don't know for yeah. sure, though. I haven't specifically talked yeah. to him about it. Yeah. Well, you don't bring up these things if you don't know the answers. I don't Jeff. know. I just found out today. <laughs> uh, are you kidding? This podcast is like 80% unfounded rumors. <laughs> Uh, but the preseason is in full swing. Uh, everyone's posting about matches and stuff like that. The only one I know of off the top of my head is, uh, Ant, um, played, oh God, he played Undead. I think it, I think it came out pretty good, um, for him. He didn't really, this is all via text, so uh, I could probably look up the match, but Ant's playing, um, Corn, which is weird. Yeah. Ant does weird things. Yeah. It's, it's the first time I think I've seen... I'm not sure if, if Korn has been in the league. I have not played against a Korn player uh, before either, but they're ultra frenzy. Like, everything has fucking frenzy. I mean, that seems like a, a team Ant would want to Yeah, like, like it's all about positioning. Because yeah. if you have anyone in the wrong position and you try and block and be like, fuck, and then it's like a two-die uphill mm-hmm. that you weren't expecting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I assume he will, he will do well with that team. Uh, or at least it's a challenge. Um Frank and Craig played uh, halflings on Dark Elves. Uh, let's see. Frank got he got eleven players that got star player points, or he got eleven. Uh, he did eleven things that give you star player points: yeah. casualties, touchdowns, etc. Craig got two. Ooh. <laughs> Rough. Craig is playing halflings. The Dark Elves crushed the halflings, yeah. uh, but it was at least training grounds for them. So all he took was BH, uh, but he took uh, six casualties. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> He got, but he did get a touchdown and MVP, so that always helps. <laughs> but Frank, once again, got a real big uh, rung up with the star player points that game. <laughs> <laughs> Just what you needed. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's about it. Everyone's everyone's smashing each other in that preseason. Is uh, what's his name? Phil? Is he doing the uh, level or the season two? Uh, Nurgle. Uh, I don't know what okay. Phil is playing. I have not kept track of everyone's teams. All I see are the constant posts on our Kill Facebook group of uh, various training grounds, et cetera, posts of like, I can play this. I can play that. Um, also, Ant got our official Kill Dice nice. in. Oh, sweet. Look, yeah. Those look real good. Yeah. Since we just got the boards and stuff in. Uh, I've only played on the board once so far. My sweet, sweet broken board. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yours broke. <laughs> yep. Just out of the bag. So uh, but it was not. It's not on a critical part. So I was not, trying to tell you something, Jeff. It just, yeah. you didn't realize. It. Yeah, I just I didn't see the signs. <laughs> didn't see the signs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Ant got his um, full on league. What is it? What's his official title? Uh, with the NAF, the uh, NAF league director nice. position, unopposed. <laughs> <laughs> Minor detail. Minor details. But yeah, he's bigwig in the in the NAF now. Indeed, he is. Yeah, super cool. He's also one year older as of yesterday. Yeah. Slash tomorrow. Ah, uh, So I see. Tuesday is his birthday. So uh-huh. happy belated when you hear this. Yes. But in advance when I say it, birthday <laughs> aunt. Yeah. Uh, yes. I'm sure everybody this, appreciates all the Is this the, is this the, the fake bowl. part of the Bloody Minute? Now it's just birthday wishes? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I at, least I, at least it's directed towards him. So. So, yeah. so I figured I would wait until the bloody minute to actually wish him a happy birthday on the show, since that might be the only part of the show he still listens to. Yeah, fair um, enough. But yeah, so happy birthday, Ant. Yeah. Hopefully you had a good one. He's up snowboarding with Megan uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. Nice. Because they have the day off. So yep. I'm going to be working and hating everything while they're up snowboarding and having fun. Good. Welcome That's... back to the workforce, yeah. Adrian. Yes. <laughs> God, sorry. This is what you were missing. <laughs> yeah. I do have an interview on Friday, though. That's good. Which is the second interview with that company. Okay. So I did a phone interview, and then they liked me enough they want me to come in in person. So we'll Fair see enough. how that goes. Hopefully it'll pay much better. And it definitely has better benefits. And yeah. Cool. That's it. That's it for the Bloody Minute. Indeed. Tournaments and training grounds. Bloody Minute and et cetera. Yes. And et cetera. Moves us on to news and Kickstarters, yeah? Very much so. Uh, 
first up in news this week, uh, we had talked about this a little bit in the past, Ninja, Ninja, Ninja Division having issues and getting dropped here and dropped there. I think Soda Pop Miniatures was just like, never mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a big article that came out from the... the Idaho Statesman. <laughs> the Idaho Statesman that went really in depth with what the issues have been at uh, Ninja Division. Yeah, so... A lot of what they report here comes from a uh, a letter. Uh, well, it comes from a variety of things. So there's some stuff where they talk about they they done a previously a whole special uh, Ninja Division being from Garden City, Idaho. So that's why the Idaho Statesman is covering this because it's like, holy shit, there's something actually happening in Idaho. Yes. Uh, so they covered them uh, a few years back when they were like going gangbusters and having all these successful Kickstarters and looked like a really upshot company yeah. that was doing great. And then they kind of followed back up. So this pulls stuff from the previous article uh, a fair amount. It also pulls from a letter that Soda Pop had to send to uh, a couple of different uh, courts uh, trying to sort this all out because Various departments people, of justice. <laughs> yeah, because people actually, you know, have been trying to sue to get their money back. Uh, so they, I know they had set, had to send a letter to uh, Washington uh, and. Uh, I don't remember what the other the other state they had to, to Idaho send stuff and to. Washington Idaho. attorneys general. Yeah. So I'm assuming the lawsuit came from Washington, and since they're based in Idaho, yeah, it involved Idaho. Um, but they're saying it's you know it's all unfortunate circumstances, and we're still trying to make sure this happens, even though they've really ghosted kick, the Kickstarter projects themselves. There's been no real updates to the actual backers, uh, which is I know has been something that's frustrated a lot of people as they. You know, they understand, like a lot of people understand delays and they're comfortable with delays as long as the publisher keeps them in the loop, uh, which they have not done a whole lot of. Um, They even at one point were supposed to do an interview with the Idaho Statesman for this article and then didn't. And instead just like, here's the letter we sent to the attorney generals. This is our official stance. Uh, You know, maybe that was something like lawyer advice. Who knows? Um as far as everything falling apart, they say they're still uh, three quarters of a million dollars, seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars away from having the money necessary to finish distribution. They're trying to figure out how to raise that capital, uh, but a lot of their issues were uh, apparently part of the problem. Which I can't the, reading this still like blows my mind that this was actually a thing that they did. Uh, they, they got to a point, they had this very successful, uh, Kickstarter for Super Dungeon Explore Legends, their expansion to their previously like successful game. And they developed it for a little while. And then they went, you know what? We're just going to throw all of that away and start from scratch to try and make it. Cause we think it'll be more fun to do it that way. And we think it'll be more fun to do this game completely different than we were. So we're just going to scrap everything and, and do it different. And that set them behind on their timeframes and everything. And then the designer they had working on it, apparently, according to this article, had some heart issues. And so they had to bring somebody else in, which means they're now paying a second designer. And it just cascaded from there. Uh, it sounds like they didn't see a lot of good retail sales for some of their things. And now they're having to hire attorneys and draft letters to send to attorney generals, which is probably putting them even further behind. Attorneys general. Attorneys general. Uh, yeah. And that was so. a uh, that was a pledge of like a hundred and fifty plus dollars per person yeah. for yeah. that game too. Yeah, I mean there are people like it, that they because they also the for the article the Idaho State's been reached out to backers and stuff who are commenting and got statements from them. There are people who spent like four hundred dollars on multiple Kickstarters with them that are now like yeah, so I'm out like eight hundred bucks <laughs> across multiple Kickstarters with these guys that I might never ever see. So Ninja Division's not looking too good. Yeah. So um at least on uh, the one side of things, it does not sound like the Idaho Attorney General will be pursuing charges or anything. Uh, they they put out a statement where basically they said, Kickstarter's website clearly says you might not get a project, that you're trying to help something happen, and we don't see any signs of negligence or fraud, uh, which would be where we'd step in. It seems like, hey, you gave them money to try and do this thing, and unfortunately it didn't work out. So, bummer. Yes. So... Ninja Division still struggling. Next up in news, uh, there's a bunch of new apps coming out. Specifically, Champions of Midgard is getting in an app. Yes. So, yeah. Gray Fox Games, our sponsors. They're uh... <laughs> <laughs> you're real slow on that for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, Champions of Midgard that we have previously reviewed. Uh, it was actually the review of that that uh, convinced them we were worth sponsoring. So you know, 
which is good considering I was a little critical of that game. Um, Definitely yeah. condensed. Uh, it's going to be on Steam. There's a couple little preview shots of it. Um, yeah, so far none of the stuff released for it has mentioned online multiplayer, uh, but I'm sure that will come. Uh, yeah, it would, yeah, it would be yeah. not a great idea. Like it's That's something you would just expect now in any online implementation of a game. Yeah, yeah. So. right now it just says local multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's also coming on PC and Mac. No mentioned plans for mobile currently. No. So it also we'll says possibility to play with AI. I don't know if that means that there might be an AI or you just have the option of playing against one or not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't know. Fingers crossed that it has AI. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <laughs> but it is early access. Mm-hmm. It's so, I mean, it'll just be building on that, of course. And that's your, that's your app corner. Yeah. Uh, some other ones that are mentioned here. Oh, Evol- yeah. Evolution uh, is going to be available to try it before it releases tomorrow. Oh. Um, yesterday, yesterday for those listening. So <laughs> yeah. you're shit out of luck on that. Just got your hopes up. Yeah. Uh, so you can't sign up for the pre-release, but it will be available when you're listening to this. So if you want evolution app, uh, Digidiced has, uh, announced that they have the rights to do Gaia project somewhere down the line. I mean, Digidice has like a thousand things coming out. So who knows how far down the line that is. Uh, and with a bigger game like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Talisman is getting a digital only expansion. So there's so many for that. Just yeah. like, holy shit. Is there so many expansions? For Which Talisman? digitally is the only way to play that game. Yeah. Because otherwise you're going to be playing it for forever. Yep. Yep. So that's that news. Yes. Uh, next up in news is uh fantasy flight announced a new star Wars game. Huzzah. <gasps> called keep milking that cow. Oh yeah. Uh, called outer rim. A lot of people have said this looks like the firefly game. Um, uh, a more streamlined version of firefly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a game of bounty hunters, mercenaries, and smugglers for one to four players. So yes, the Firefly game. Uh, uh, well, you had Rebellion that was the Imperials and the Rebels, and so this is the third faction. Yeah. yeah. Just doing their own shit. <laughs> true. Um, but yeah, you'll be traveling around in your own personal ship, hiring different people to be your crew, and trying to become the most famous or infamous outlaw in the galaxy. Uh, warring factions roam the Outer Rim, hunting down the scum that had proven to be a thorn in their side. Uh, and yeah. You have various people, scum and villainy characters that you're playing as, but you like sort of upgrade your ship and then there's sort of like a quest for the sh- various ships that once you like complete that, that turns into its sort of like legendary version. So a modified YT-1300 light freighter will then turn into the Millennium Falcon when you sort of hit certain objectives. Yeah. Yeah. Which I thought was cool. Uh, it uses dice straight out of X-Wing miniatures game. Okay. That's the exact dice it will use. They even say in here that you can take that dice, uh, those dice and use them in X-Wing. Uh, and a lot of people were talking about online about how, Hey, you finally get enough dice to play X-Wing with in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you always have to buy like an extra dice yeah. set for that game. For most fantasy. Flight yeah. Things. <laughs> yes. That were, yeah. Yeah. They always come with enough dice, but not a, as no. much as you would want. Yes. Uh, <laughs> as much dice as you need, not as much as you want. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, there's Look eight... at you, Twilight Imperium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Eldritch Horror. Or, or literally Ar- every, all yeah. of them. Yes. Yeah. Or Imperial Assault. Or... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, there are eight different uh, like character cards you can take advantage of. Uh, they haven't released all of them, but there's five of them they show in a photo here. Uh, one that I don't know, Dr. Afra, and then four that I do know, uh, Jin Urso, Han Solo, Boba Fett, and Lando Calrissian. So really going for the uh, cashing in on famous characters aspect. It would been real, real funny and just to see people lose their shit if it was just Donald Glover and, <laughs> and uh, what's his name? Alden. Oh, I, from just all yes. from Solo? Yeah. I watched yeah. that movie. I did not like it. It was fine. It was fine. Disagree. But we're not here to talk about that. I'm trying to figure out who Dr. Afra is. Afra is, yeah. No idea. Looks like from comic books. Okay. Majority. Yeah. Maz Kanata shows up. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, she's like, what, 800 years old or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Like so. all Star Wars characters, there is a lot of information yes. here. <laughs> Not surprising. <laughs> yes. But yeah, it uh, looks like this is coming out uh, second quarter of 2019. So. All right. Keep an eye out yeah. for uh, Outer Rim. Not, not, a, not a Gen Con release. No. It Definitely. looks like she was in the 
Darth Vader comic book uh, series. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Which I think was uh, the a more recent Marvel series after yep. they got the license, so it's all canon mm-hmm. stuff. So I've, heard, I've heard good things about the Darth Vader one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have too. Uh, but I guess that's a, a deep fan cut from that series. Gotcha. Which is cool. Yeah. Well, and also there there aren't that many uh, scoundrels from the the main movies to really pull from. I mean, there are that you people that are still canon. Yeah, there, a lot of that was the old legends. Well, I stuff. mean, from, I mean, like from the movies, like there aren't that many there. No, you could be yeah. like, eh, that's Bosk. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, does anyone really know what Bosk does? Exactly. So, no, I know they have that. That race has a lot of shotguns and imperial assaults. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> you're not wrong. Yeah. So many shotguns. Yes. Next up in news, it's time for more stories uh, with. They uh, hit this huge info dump on what exactly the blue series of time stories will be. Which they're just calling time stories revolution now. Revolution. Uh, the first one, which I think we've talked about before, a midsummer night. Uh, and was it two different ones coming out at the same time? Uh, I think so. Or it, like right near each other. Yeah. Uh, and they're all pretty much all self-contained. Mm-hmm. Um, and... So this is this is gonna be the blue cycle, although it's like I mean it does have some blue on it. It's still a pretty white box. <laughs> it's still a pretty white box. Yeah. yeah. There's more blue on it than there are on the other boxes. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh so like we said before, you don't need a base game for this. It's just self contained. Have we said that before? I I think we did. Okay. I, I don't know. But, I mean, when I saw this, it was the first time I'd heard of it. Oh, but. okay. Uh, so yeah, you don't need that base set for time stories anymore. Nope. You just buy this box and that's uh, what you play. Yeah. They're getting rid of, uh, the time units. No more time units. No more time units. Oh no. Uh, and it looks like it's supposed to take two to three hours instead of the. It's like 90, 60, 45 yeah. ish <laughs> as you kind of thin it down. Uh, and then it looks like character, like items were a big thing in all the previous time stories. Uh, getting the items that you need, and these seem to be more character based. So it's like characters interacting with other characters, and yeah, you actually each, each character has its own deck of cards. Yeah. It's gonna like go through things, and yeah, you'll you'll interact entirely different. Like you know, previously somebody might talk the same, regardless of like who you are currently yeah. receptacling. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> now, now that that will actually play more of a more of a choice or a factor in where you can go and what you can do than it did before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it does look like there's going to be an expansion called like experience that will that you can run between scenarios to give you sort of what the overall story is. But if you okay. just care about like if you don't care about it's like a oh what was it um, the Assassin's Creed games where you're like I don't really care about the future shit. I only really care about the medieval or whatever Assassin-y Templar the, the assa- stuff. like being the actual assassin shit. Yeah, that's all I care about. So you don't want to wander around a lab for a while. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was actually one of my favorite parts of Assassin's Creed. <laughs> you would. <laughs> You're the reason they kept making it like that. <laughs> That's cool that they're they're kind of throwing that extra layer in there. Yeah. yeah. It seems like these are all original ideas and I look forward to uh yeah. giving them a shot. First picture they have there, the Midsummer Night is alternate timeline forty nine fifty one. I don't remember what the last alternate timeline game took place in. I don't remember. Uh, it looks like the Hadal project is the other one that's going to be released around the same yeah. time. So. Uh, different designers on them as well. Yep. So they'll be quite different. Yeah. That'll be coming out quarter three this year. Yeah. I would I would suspect Gen Con. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah, because last year they did that. I thought, I, I keep saying it, but I think Brotherhood of the Coast, or Brotherhood, I think, is it Brotherhood of the Coast? Brotherhood of the Coast, I yes. think that was a surprise release at Gen Con. Mm. Or they had, they had supply. Gotcha. Which people were not expecting. A surprise supply. <laughs> yeah, which they've done before. Yeah. Or people people have done. Mm-hmm. People do. They do. People be doing it. That's, that's it for news. News be done. News be did. On to Kickstarters. Uh, first up in Kickstarters this week is Millennium Blades Collusion. A uh, very well-funded $252,000 of its $75,000 goal. Uh, 2,600 backers and just over two weeks to pledge this one, which it's most popular by far is 60 whole dollars, which is the, uh, the expansion, the little, uh, promo cards, and then any stretch goals. Yep. All crossover promotional cards. Yes. And, and usually what that means is like for dice throne or doom town, like just other game companies that they get their own little 
like oh. little mentions of in here. Uh, Collusion in and of itself is going to be adding an entirely new play mode as well as 400 new cards, which is a shit ton of cards. It sounds roughly the sa- similar to the same amount as uh, Set Collection, um, but the reason why this is about tw- uh, 20-ish dollars more than Set Collection is that it's how is, it now has an even bigger box than Millennium Blades, so you can store everything inside it's of it. It's a box for all the other shit. Yep. So, yeah, so it's also a big box expansion, Yes, exactly. Yeah. You can also get everything for like two hundred and twenty. Yeah, two hundred twenty. Yeah, it gives you everything, <laughs> including the mat. Uh, and if you just want the cards, one hundred ninety five dollars, and yeah. then one hundred fifteen dollars for this expansion and Millennium Blades. Yeah. Uh, the new play mode is team play. Uh, it also includes a player board to include to to bring it up to six players, mm-hmm. so you can actually play the team player, uh, which only works in like three to six player games. Yeah. Um, yeah, different team powers and things that you can do when you and work you can, together. And you can have, uh, even though it is team play, you can have like someone be their own. So you can, you can play team play with five players. Just like one person is like the single, and like they have specific rules for that too. So it's not like you have to do it at four or six. I never realized Millennium Blades was so expensive. A lot of cards. Yeah, it's a lot it's of like cards. eighty dollars for just the base set. Yeah. Um, Shipping, however, for this is pretty pretty good. good. Yeah, no, they were able to get a lot of a lot of good things for that. Like, if you go all in, I think their like New Zealand shipping is the most expensive <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> at forty bucks, which yeah. is not too bad. Yeah, I I really like the pun tastic names of their new characters, like Rule Sou- Sour, <laughs> Rules Yower, uh, Captain Cheetar. Yep. Have you played this at all, Millennium Blades? Yeah, I have it. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we started to play once, and then I was brewing beer. You, were, you, you, and Jared were both brewing beer, and we were like, "Hey, we're gamers. We game. We can just do the. We don't have to do the starter shit. We can just go immediately <laughs> into the uh, the the drafting phase." And then I remember the first thing we were doing. We we're like, "What the fuck are we supposed to be like?" It's like, I mean, explain what everything is, but it's like, what are we looking for? And you just, just like, need to get to the end. Yeah, yeah. That's how you win the game. Get yeah, to exactly, the end. Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, uh, it was brutal. But no, I still. This I continues still... to be a game that we would want to play yes. and haven't. Yeah. No. It's. I'm definitely going to make us review it at some point. So it looks cool. Yeah. Still has some of the money component itself is very shitty paper, but it's a fact. Or uh, it's the fact that you you sticker them together and then they're stacks of paper yeah. immediately make them like, oh, these are great. Yeah, I'm sure. Man, Mm -hmm. that Millennium Blades. More money. Yeah. Stretch goal. Unlocked. Yes. (laughs) Um, And I will say the uh, this it looks to be the final at least big expansion. Uh, They may do like smaller, smaller box ones like cross the crossovers sort of things again. But this will be the the big the final the final one that adds a shitload of content or shitload of cards. And it's adding a shitload. Yeah. No. There's like a Burgle Bros Millennium Blades expansion. Yep. Yep. Interesting. At, at 285000 the stretch goal is box customization stickers to decorate and personalize your own collusion box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. That's what I want is a fucking mm-hmm. stretch goal. Uh, one that they unlocked recently. Well, not even that recently, but uh, new mats that you can upgrade for the store in the aftermarket, which will be good. And uh, I, I'm really like, I like that they have like their box storage solution and can include like different spots for your store. So you can keep it over multiple plays uh, because you can you can technically remake the store every time, but it takes a long time to do because it's annoying. Cause it's, so it's making the store, Jeff, is like taking like eight to 12 different types of cards and just mixing them all together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it looks like they're doing a lot of uh, core changes to the rules to make it uh, more refined and, and play better, basically, which is good. It's always a nice thing. Yes. I immediately looked, I was like, can these be implemented in base Millennium Blades? Because some of the things I was like, oh, that make, definitely makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. Next up on Kickstarter is Wavelength. Uh, another well-funded one, $112,000 of its $30,000 goal. Over 3,000 backers and uh, three weeks left to pledge this one, which you can for 29 whole dollars. That's it. 29 bucks. Yeah. Nice and cheap. Uh Wavelength is a social guessing game uh, where two teams compete to read each other's minds. Um, designed by Wolfgang Warsh, uh, Alex Haig, and Justin Vickers. Uh, Wolfgang Warsh 
I mean, you, famously from The Mind. <laughs> yep. Uh, and so like literally everything else currently. <laughs> more, more, you know, mind reading type stuff uh, behind this one. Uh, Alex and Justin both made Monikers, uh, which is another fairly famous social game. Um, it's got some fantastic art uh, going on for it and is super simple. Uh, so each round, one of the teams rotates a 3D dial to where they think a hidden bullseye is located on a spectrum. Uh, so it's like a, a color spectrum there. Um, it's hidden by a plastic screen, uh, but one player on your team, uh, the psychic, knows exactly where it is, and they have to get you to guess it, uh, which they do by drawing a card that has a pair of words that represent two ends of a spectrum, like fantasy or sci-fi, or quiet place, loud place, rough, smooth, things like that. Hot, cold, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Giving a clue that is conceptually where the bullseye is located between those two binaries. So, like, the example they show here is, like, they you're, the spectrum's kind of more to the left of this this thing here. And the card is hot and cold. And they say coffee. So it's on the coffee end of the hot-cold spectrum. So you're like, yeah, coffee's hot. But then, mm-hmm. like, some of the questions are, well, well, yeah, but, like, how hot's the sun? <laughs> and, like, and, you know, and, and then, uh, so... Scalding drip coffee or Exa- ice coffee? Exactly, yeah. Well, it can't be that hot since there's stuff like lava. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I'm thinking coffee isn't even hot. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's one of those things like like code names where you like you give a clue that in your mind you're like this is obviously it, and then they start talking and then you're like, where are you going with this conversation? <laughs> the spectrums are really good. Um, I think there was unsexy emoji and then sexy emoji. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then, so, uh, you do that, you debate about what the clue is. And then once you're ready, you say that like, Hey, we're ready. But before then, uh, the other team gets a chance to guess whether the bullseye is to the left or the right of your position. Uh, and they'll get a point if they're right. And then you reveal to see, like, if you were correct about your guess. Oh, okay. After they choose where it is in the general vicinity, then they go, uh, we think you're, like, too hot or too cold. Correct. And then, okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. That's cool. Yeah, it's a cool little game. I Uh, think that would be... 168 different spectrums. Yeah. Uh, combined with the randomized bullseye position, uh, give you an infinite number of weird and challenging combinations. Uh, doesn't vape to vapes, taste bad to taste good. <laughs> I really want to play this game. Yeah, I do too. And apparently they're doing like daily challenges on Twitter where you can play. Uh, I really like this quote from uh, Robert v- uh, Vinluan from New York Times Games. Nothing brings as much joy as friends agreeing on, ha- on exactly how sexy the top hat emoji is. <laughs> Looks like a cool game. Yeah. Yes. It's one of those ones where, I don't know, if someone just, like, hey, we made a game about this that didn't seem that interesting, but actually looking at it, and I was like, oh, okay, I can see where the magic in this is. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Talking through these things will lead to some oddly profound discussions, like, how ugly is a baby kangaroo? (laughs) Is stealing from orphans forgivable? (laughs) Does cotton smell good? How hairy is David Hasselhoff? And is pizza a sandwich? Oh God! No, no, no. <laughs> open face sandwich. No, <laughs> don't. Th- those are the type of questions you don't want to like. There is a well of those. Like, is cereal <laughs> soup? <laughs> I think I think soup needs heat. No, it doesn't. Is cereal cooking? That's sometimes. Does yeah. cooking need heat? It, no, not yeah. ex- not all the time. Yeah, because gazpacho, you don't have to cook that. Yeah. <laughs> so prepare for those and many yeah, others. Exactly. Yeah. In wavelength. Yep. On Kickstarter now. Yeah. <laughs> I uh definitely interested in this one. Yes. Uh next up in Kickstarters is Terror Below. Uh this one, another well funded one, fifty six thousand of its ten thousand dollar goal, thirteen hundred backers, and just under two weeks left to pledge this one, which you can for forty five dollars. Terror below, aka we couldn't get the right to tremors. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes. this is very Tremors. Uh, brought to us by Renegade Game Studios, who continue to make some cool games. Uh, it is a game of government experiments gone wild in the Nevada desert. Uh, and yeah, it, it's it's Tremors. Uh, you're moving around, but the more you move, the more vibrations you make, which attracts the worms. The uh, weapons of remote massacre. <laughs> <laughs> you... Uh, <laughs> 
you're trying to get different worm eggs and get them to different locations to collect bounties. Uh, if you're feeling lucky, you can get items and weapons to go actually hunt the worms. Uh, it plays two to five players, takes 45 to 60 minutes, uh, and is, yeah, just as ridiculous as you would expect. It's a giant egg-shaped board because of reasons. Because you have to, like, collect the eggs. eggs. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, I don't feel like the eggs are that big of a eh. thing. Um, player pawns are different vehicles. Like, they have a Jeep, a car, and a van. Currently showing of three of them. Uh, they unlocked upgraded 3D eggs. A uh, whole bunch of rubble pieces that are, like, little plastic gems. Uh, custom dice. Uh, the worm standees are pretty awesome. I like that the worms are all different and they don't actually, any of them look like the tremors worms, which is kind of nice. Yeah. They did do a different style. Uh, it looks like the worms might do different types of damage. Like the screamer, Uh, it shows like, looks like it can attack like in a whole (laughs) row. Uh, whereas other ones might attack like, you know, a square spaces or things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks, I, I, I really like the, the artwork and the, the overall vibe I'm getting from, the game yeah there is a kickstarter exclusive expansion attached to this but i think you get it um with the base pledge yeah yes. like it's, yeah. it's 45 bucks and you're just getting that expansion for free kickstarter exclusive 20 dollar value i mean does that mean the base game is only like 25 dollars, and then you're getting a 20 dollar <laughs> expansion <laughs> no uh no i think it's just yeah uh and it's got gen con pickup so it's probably coming out around gen con Get an invitation to the Gen Con launch party. Ooh. That's how we get in with Renegade. Yep. All right, so (laughs) when are you guys going to have back this? Yep. It's only 45 bucks. Yeah. It's networking expense. Indeed. We'll we'll have the podcast fund it. Yeah, there we go. (laughs) Sure. No, because then that'll set a precedence that'll let him get a bunch of Vila Lacerda. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Buy your fucking $130 expansion for food chain. (laughs) That's not on Kickstarter. So it doesn't set a precedent for that. (laughs) It's true. It does set a precedent for the first 18XX on Kickstarter here pretty soon. <laughs> Is there one coming? 18 Chesapeake will be coming oh, sometime right. soon. Yeah. yeah. Super excited for it. Should only be like 60 to 80 bucks. Yeah. Fingers crossed. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's Terror Below, which is what we're talking about right now. Not hypothetical 18XX Kickstarters. No. Splot, splotter to Kickstarters, huh? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I can't imagine the shit show that that would cause. Oh, Here's God. the game. There are no stretch goals. The components are all what the components are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just give us money. <laughs> uh, last up in Kickstarter this week is Reunification. Uh, well funded, nineteen hundred dollars of its five hundred dollar goal. Uh, one hundred and forty nine backers and a week left to pledge this one, which you can for a whole ten dollars. Yeah, nice and nice and short. Uh, so this is coming to us from Travis Hill, uh, who is one of the main hosts over on the Low Player Count podcast, uh, which is a. Uh, member podcast of Punchboard Media along with us. Uh, I've met Travis. I delivered coffee to him. Uh, <laughs> Tom gave me coffee I- at Geekway to take to him at HeavyCon the following weekend. And so Interesting. I, and so I got to HeavyCon and I was like... I'm sure it was very cold coffee at that point. <laughs> no, no, it was like <laughs> coffee grounds. everywhere. It was like nice <laughs> coffee grounds. Uh, but yeah, I was at HeavyCon and I was like, Edward, where's Travis? He's like, that's Travis, the guy with the beard. I was like, that doesn't help at all. Uh, luckily, he pointed directly <laughs> at him. I went over. I was like, hey, Travis, I have coffee for you from Tom. And he's like, oh, hey, thanks. And we chatted a bit, and he was super nice. Uh, that was my only experience ever meeting Travis. But uh, Reunification is his first game that he's kind of done all on his own. It is a letter-writing uh, RPG based on like some of the old-school RPG zines? Zines? Zines. Zines? Uh, that I'm not really familiar with because I'm fairly new to the world of RPGs, but essentially like a small little RPG and like a, a magazine, like a small little little book with all the rules and everything you need. Um, the setting for it, it's a three to five player game, like I said, uh, where you are all family members who have been split up uh, as your country has dissolved into this tumultuous civil war. Uh, and so years later, the the civil war's ending, the country's reunifying, and you are sending letters back and forth asking each other questions and just trying to get to know this family that you've been estranged from for so long due to the Civil War. So, like, the kind of thing that might have happened, you know, when the Berlin Wall went down and, like, families who have been separated for generations uh, on the East and the West are, like, kind of coming back together and trying to, like, be like, hey, we're family, technically. We should know each other. Um, But uh, 
essentially you all together, uh, you choose, you name a country, uh, you choose name, age, and description for whatever family member you're going to portray. And then you're going to play out four different seasons, uh, each of them being divided into different months, and it all make up one year of play. And so that's the year of reunification, where you're just getting to know each other as this all happens. Uh, during each month, you write letters in the form of questions, pass them around, and then answer them. Upon receiving the answers, you ascribe a word to that response uh, as a deeper insight as to who your family members are. Uh, then there's an event that all the players have to respond to. And then after the four seasons are over, the year ends and reunification begins. Uh, and you discuss what insights you've learned about each other. Uh, questions can fall into one of three forms, personal, controversial, or abstract. Uh, and they give examples here of the three different ones, like personal questions might be like, what have you always wanted but never gotten? What are you most thankful for? Who is your hero? Uh, whereas controversial can be like, is censorship necessary? Does absolute power corrupt absolutely? What is the largest waste of human potential? Or abstract things like, what risks are worth taking? If you could teach the world one concept, what would it be? What is something you take for granted? Um, but you play this all in silence, which I think is kind of an interesting twist because you're not actually reunified like you're sending these letters. So your only communication is the written notes you're passing around the table. So other players aren't hearing your answers they, to like one person's question. They're not hearing what questions you're getting. Uh, and so then at the end of the year, when you kind of like discuss what you've learned about each other, it leads to this kind of like revelatory feeling uh, around around the table with everybody's characters learning a little bit about each other. So, yeah. And that's there's essentially a rule book. the game. Yeah, there's a rule book on here. Uh, there's like an event at the end of the, each year. I'm not sure if you mentioned that. Yeah. Okay. The, the base that's, basically the only, that's basically the only time you talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Zach, you're immediately already uh, completely out of this because they require you to have your own scraps of paper, uh, they do a die, and a writing utensil. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. With RPGs, I feel like it's different. So, different, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seems like a little neat thing for 10 bucks. Yeah, uh, and it includes a bunch of other things, um, print, There's, audio, and music resources that kind of inspired him to make this game that kind of go hand in hand with it, uh, rules to change it to a fantasy, sci-fi, or even a real world setting. So if you really wanted to pretend to be, you know, people reunite, reuniting after a real world civil war and like make it fit that, there's stuff for that. Uh, a list of families, names, conflicts, so you can just pull from lists or roll for lists if you don't want to sit there and debate about what fictional country and fictional war and fictional people you want to be. Uh, 60 questions, so if you are playing with people who are new to the game and don't really understand what kinds of questions to ask, there's lists of questions, and a full example of uh, an extended play session of how the game might play out. There's also a mini game that it's a prequel to the game. That's available right now um, on Gumroad for free or like whatever you think is a fair price. Okay. Yeah. I missed that. Um, it's like two to five players, sort yeah. of like a little thing about pre-Civil War. Um, the other cool thing that Travis is doing with this, Travis is a teacher. Um, he cares very much about teaching and things like that and trying to like use games as tools to teach. Uh, and so as part of this... Uh, they're doing a bunch of things. They're doing a bunch of different things where uh, if you pledge it all for any of the pledge levels uh, or no, sorry, the gifted level, uh, you get to send copies to like schools or libraries or things that you think should have them. Um, and then there's other things they are going to do where like they're going to be donating extra money and things from the Kickstarter uh, to, to kind of help out with schools and charity type things, which I think is that's awesome. good. Yeah. Yes. That's it for Kickstarter. Indeed. Yeah. On to listener feedback. Yes. Is this a thing we still do? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. And what do we start with, Jeff? Emails at milehighgameguys.com. He remembers. Yes, he does. <laughs> Which we have an email this week from Ant titled, Bout Time. Jesus fuck. I can't handle any more of the fake bloody minutes. <laughs> What did you people do to him while I was talking? <laughs> you should have listened. They should have listened. I, yeah, clearly. I specifically only go to that part. I've waited two weeks to tell you that you are fucking wrong again, though. Uh, the last bloody minute where you said NAF is 10 and I charge 15 because uh, it was extra steps. Fuck's sake, even your correction was wrong. I charge $5 because it saves the NAF on shipping. But I don't have any more 
prizes, and people were getting too specific with what they wanted. It's easier to go through the website, and we have guaranteed accounts set up that uh, don't delay the results. Anyway, I'm glad there's someone to at least give me a few minutes to enjoy. <laughs> NAF League director, me, but Ant, he just put me, uh, P.S., sorry I ditched you in the hospital. I'll <laughs> stick around for your third visit. <laughs> is, he, is he saying the next time you get injured, or or <laughs> <Yeah>, just... <laughs> I don't know. Like... Like, he was in the clinic and took all my stuff. I think he still has... Yeah, he definitely... Well, I hope he still has all my stuff. Uh, well, no, because no, he, he stayed with you when you got your kidney stone, right? At the hospital? Or no, he, no. He didn't did, even know I was in there until oh, okay. I came back. He was at a haircut giving a picture of Bloody Mary's to his well, hairstylist. Well, so, so maybe that's what he means. Yeah. Like, he missed your first hospital uh, visit with the kidney okay. stone. Yeah. He was not really with you for your second hospital visit with but the broken it, yeah. leg. Yeah. But next time... Next, next time. time yeah. next, next time you're time. in the hospital, he'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he hung around for a little bit. I... I I got my wallets and belongings from him, which, and then he had to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> that was emails at milehighgameguys.com if you would like to send us an email. Uh, next up will be BGG. Uh, Zach, do you have those uh, ready to go? Yes, I do. Uh, this is from our discussion last week on um, ostensibly about board gaming publishing, although we talked about other things too. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is from Kevin. Hi, uh, hey, M. Hi. Game G's. <laughs> <clears throat> not sure if we've seen that one yet. I don't think so. I know and appreciate how you always try to make an effort to pronounce foreign language words as best as possible. Oh, I was, dear. I was listening to episode 129 and found a pronunciation mistake um, when you were talking about portal games. The word preda, uh So we were saying Predator, but it's not that. Yeah, it's Predator Um it comes from French, my native language, and means ready to wear. This mistake was in the last word in French in porter. In French, it sounds more like portier, not porter like the beer style. Uh, you can hear the word spoken on Google Translate, which I'm not going to click. <laughs> <laughs> on another note, I'd love to watch a live show of your recording session. You don't even have to release it after. Just make it available live and let the people interact with you live. Okay. I thought it was just like, just let me watch it. I just, I just want to watch. Just Kevin. I've yeah. got some Kleenex. I've got some lotion. I'm good to go. We're going to make a night of it. Uh, another podcast I follow does this, and it's been a lot of fun to interact with them live. I've been listening to you guys for the past year. Keep up the great work. Cheers, Kevin from Quebec. Uh, yes. So we actually have now uh, some webcam mics or cameras that we got. We just now need to get a computer that can handle <laughs> doing two webcam streams. And then we've talked about streaming at least the Wednesday and, and actually having like a portion where we interact with chat. We won't be able to interact with chat the entire time because good God, we'd never get anything done. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it could be be a part of that. So I don't know. That's something we thought about. I, I think it would be fun. Yeah. So, uh, so there was... There wasn't any more BGG, but there was something from Slack that I sort of wanted to talk about. Okay. This is from Wally. He 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 it was like nice discussion on the board gaming industry. And then he gets some comments and I was gonna be like, just post that to the thing. And I was just like, well, I'll just take a picture of it and then I'll just do it from there. Um, Fair enough. One note on the comparison versus other media like movies, uh, books, and video games. Uh, is that the board games require much more commitment from the users. Like you guys said, you can see a movie once and be qualified to speak on its merits, but trying a at least medium-ish game once and it's possible you haven't even seen everything the game has to offer, taste aside. Uh, along, uh, along that is that since board games are physical media, the cost to acquire, store, learn, and then finally play it with the desired player counts is significantly higher than books, movies, and even video games. It helps exasperate... That weird dichotomy we have right now where Ignacy is saying one and done and Jamie is saying, oh, knows we need more. Uh, then you have those weird pockets of hype, no, hi no hype, hype again. Mm. Then you have those weird pockets of hype, no hype, then hype again, usually due to a major tastemaker like uh, Shut Up and Sit Down or new expansion releases or something. Timing can be everything like what would have happened if Terraforming Mars comes out now instead of 2016. I don't know. I think Terraform Mars is one of those games that's like good enough that it's always going to do well. Yeah. Like the only thing I could think different if Terraform Mars is coming out now, the industry standard for components has changed enough that yeah. the player boards might have been better. But because I could see like if they were play testing it all the way, you know, in theory they would have been play testing it over the last two years mm -hmm. and people would have been like, 
holy shit, you need recessed player boards for these things. Yeah. <laughs> and Bonacore would have taken that into advice. Yeah. But and I that, think for the most part, like, good games are going to typically do well regardless. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, no, I thought, I thought he brought up a good point um, that I wanted to make sure was actually, we discussed it, so. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like we mentioned that, and I, and I wish we'd had more time to really go deeper. I mean, it was a relatively short episode overall. But uh, especially because there was a final thoughts. I cut like 30 minutes yeah. of final thoughts. It was just us rehashing everything we had just said. Yep. Uh, so at the time when we ended the episode, we were like two hours in. It was like, we mm-hmm. can't keep going. Yeah. Uh, but I would have loved to get a little bit deeper in some of those things. And and there, there's a lot more that goes into it. You know, it kind of played in that third part where we talk, started talking about like how people view their collections. And yeah. like they expect a game to have a lot more longevity than anybody ever expects mm-hmm. for movies or music, or even books. Books, I think there is some expectation of longevity. Like, books are another thing that people kind of collect, and they're proud of their bookshelves and, like, their libraries. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it from those two. Right on. Uh, A couple new YouTube comments over on uh, Paulo's Corner. Uh, First up on episode 128, uh, Break from Normality. Uh, That was the first episode sans Jeff. Which, Uh, Jeff, it took him, like, a week plus to get that get a break from normality it was one we were on uh reading a comment for on episode 129 he read on episode 128 a broke from a break from for, uh, a break from normality i just got that yeah something about seeing break in that situation was like oh he's it's the uh, jeff broke his leg i get it anyway congratulations Paulo on Adrian. Paulo's corner uh says jeff's will come and go uh in quotes uh harsh ha 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 but seriously, hope that Jeff recovers fast and to 100%. So, Jeff, I hope you get to 105%. You've got titanium now. <laughs> You're Jeff Plus. <laughs> yeah. Put some power in that sucker. Be a yep. cyborg. Indeed. Uh, he then follows up uh, that comment with another one uh, saying, I played Gugong twice and really liked it. It's mostly... He really, really liked it. And really, really liked it. Sorry, my brain just... Yeah, often <laughs> wipes out double words. It's mostly a tactical game because what others can do, uh, what others do, can really change what you want slash need to do. There's a lot of mitigation by discarding cards or using two meeples. A lot of interesting interaction between players, and still some strategy by looking at what decrees are in the game. Uh, the cards being played, the travel tokens, etc. Really good game. Uh, I think that's probably where I had my biggest problem with you, Gugong. You don't like ta- the tactics. I prefer yeah. strategy over tactics. I like long-term strategy versus short-term tactics. Uh, and especially, I was not expecting it to be so heavily tactical. Like, yeah. if I know that going in, there's a lot more I can do. Like, I can get more used to the idea. Like, all right, don't try and have a long-term strategy. Like, have a, maybe a vague plan. What you want is a long-term goal. Yeah. It's like I wanna, I wanna sort of have this at the end. How I get to it is gonna change dramatically, but yeah. So I, I'll give it another shot. Uh, I think my expectations being understanding more of what I'm going into will help yeah. a lot with yeah. that. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, and then on uh, YouTube, Paulo Corner continuing on to a different episode on the review Pandemic Fall of Rome. Paulo says. Not a big fan of Pandemic, but this seems to be the most interesting iteration of the game. Uh, I think all three of us disagreed with that. I think all three of us found this to be, like, in the middle of the iterations of Pandemic. I would say higher towards it, but yeah. Yeah. You still haven't played it, right, Jeff? What? Fall of Rome? Rome. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Okay. What did you think of it? It was interesting. Okay. Uh, That was the one that we played here with uh, Leander. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we were prepping for a review. Yeah. And then Jeff had to go snap his leg. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't want to review the game, you could have just (laughs) told us. Yeah. Real (laughs) selfish. (laughs) Way easier ways to go about getting out of a review, Jeff. That's true. I'll think of that next time. There you go. (laughs) I'll break like a hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. (laughs) Look, I mean, even like a fracture or or just a sprain, maybe. Maybe not disconnect the whole foot from the rest of my body kind of thing. Yeah, it doesn't need to be flopping on its own. Yeah. You don't need a new joint. Did you ever see it flopping around or? Um, no. Okay. No. Um, the, the most was at the clinic when they were able to, when they got the boot off, ugh, <laughs> that was terrible. Um, 
and it was sort of like my leg was straight, but then my foot was sort of just sort of like <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't hurt though. No. Um, I thought it, you said taking off the boot did hurt. Oh, but I mean like after, like oh, okay. just like sitting there was fine, but like after uh, was, but d- getting the boot off was just, oh my God. Yeah. I could... really wish they would have given me pain meds before they took the boot off because <laughs> there wasn't really anything stopping them from just like taking a minute, putting the IV in and then taking the boot off. Like, did they really need to make sure that the leg was broken before yeah, they gave me pain meds? Because <laughs> didn't you say you were, like, talking to somebody off to one side and then yes. somebody else started taking the boot off? And you're I like, I had noticed he was unlacing the boot. And he was like, it's a good thing you have laces because I can really go all the way down. And I thought they were going to give me a warning before this happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just starts going and it was bad. <laughs> you did not finish your sentence, I'm assuming. I did not. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry to laugh at your pain, Jeff. Oh, it was rough. Yeah. And he was and the guy was like, usually people hate me after that part. And I was like, no, it was all right. It's fine. Just I like mean, a, it needed to happen. Yeah. I mean, still maybe a general dislike, but not not <laughs> hate strong. Hate's a strong word. Yeah, hate is a strong word. At least they were able to save the boot. They didn't yeah. have to like cut your boot off. That's very true. Apparently that happens a fair amount with skiers. Uh yeah, because like, their ski boots have to like yeah, actually be cut off. Because they're much yeah. harder yeah. like clam shelled on there. Yeah, and like the unclipping i think can like do like like more jarring it's like a yeah it's not good not good my mom when she broke her leg as a like teenager skiing they cut her boots off ah that seems difficult to do yeah (laughs) uh that is it for listener feedback yes no more listener feedback ever (laughs) please stop we're done with it (laughs) we've moved on um if you would like to get a hold of us and leave us feedback that we will actually come back to. <laughs> we, we we will do feedback in future episodes, I promise. Uh, but, Jeff, you're back. You get to do your catchphrase. If you want to get a hold of us, you can do so. Emails at milehighgameguys.com. Yes. Uh, you can also join our Board Game Geek Guild, guild number 2731, where Zach does episode posts. Uh, or you can comment on either the Wednesday or Friday episode. They're wrapped up. He even changed the formatting of the title to indicate that. It's much clearer. I, it's slightly clear. I don't know. Much might be a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only way to be clear is if I just did two, two separate two, posts, which is way too much work, and would just clutter things. Exactly. We don't need that. Yeah. Um. You can also always find us over on Twitter, where I tweet under at mh game guys. I am Zach underscore mhgg. I am Jeff underscore mhgg. Don't worry, I was repping you. When, yeah. Yeah. Was, <laughs> he was. He was doing Zach and. You could get. You could tweet Jeff at. I didn't. I didn't, didn't see. Let, sweet... I didn't let. I didn't let fake Jeff do that. Good. I was just like, no. You can... <laughs> no. You can see sweet pictures of my broken leg <laughs> yes. at Jeff underscore mhgg. There you go. You can also find us over on Facebook and Instagram slash Mile High Game Guys, and be sure to check out milehighgameguys.com for full for full show notes uh, with links to all of the news and Kickstarter items we talk about. Uh, for reviews and discussions, we provide links to articles we reference or the bgg page for games we review things like that a whole bunch of awesome useful links over there uh, on the website in case your app doesn't already show the links some of them do do the links right in the app yep yeah plenty of ways to get in touch with us uh as always we would like to thank our sponsors gray fox games for sponsoring this episode their new game sukiyumi full moon down will be launching on kickstarter in mid-march uh, it is essentially going to mostly be a reprint Kickstarter. There are a few changes coming. They are adding minis, uh, and to go along with the minis, there are going to be some rule tweaks because previously the standees in the original Kickstarter had information on them that you could easily see and reference. And so they're doing some rule tweaks to accommodate that as well as previously the rules were written in German and then just roughly translated to English. This time they are being written fully in English uh, which will apparently clear up some miscommunications in the initial rules. Um, yeah, nice little updated uh, Kickstarter for that coming, like I said, in mid-March. I like where the moon just sort of rolled across the surface of the yeah. Earth. <laughs> yeah. It's got a cool cyber samurai coming. Yeah. Yeah. No, not a cyber ninja. No, very cyborg ninja. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, that's Tsukiyumi. Uh, we'll have more information on that. Uh, in the coming weeks as we get closer and closer to that Kickstarter. So uh, stay tuned. Jeff, you're back. <gasps> Did you have a 
statement prepared. Gray Fox Games, quality games cleverly crafted. Also, even if a pawn becomes a queen, it is still just a playing piece. Dark. I, I like, like it. it. Yeah. Uh, but that wraps up the episode. Uh, glad to have you back on the show, Jeff. Woo. No more fake Jeffs. No more <laughs> fake Jeffs. Good notes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Show notes, much improved. <clears throat> this is 100% agree. No. It's almost like one person had over two years of experience doing show notes, <laughs> yeah. and one person had done them for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, does what he normally does whenever he takes notes is – in the beginning, start to do fine and then slowly stop paying attention <laughs> and then just start drawing on the side. <laughs> oh, I doodle less than I used to. Yeah. Yeah, there used to be some good doodles in your yeah. show notes too. Yeah. Or just random one off comments. <laughs> yes. He still does those on occasion. On yeah. occasion. But uh, that is the entirety of the Wednesday episode. We are now all done. Thanks everybody for tuning in. As always. I have been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach. And I'm Titanium Jeff. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Bye. 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 Um, You can also find us. Whoa. (laughs) And and this is where Adrian just dies. Yeah. (laughs) Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com.